A scandal happened. What massive scandal? It wasn't even a massive scandal. Looking back on it again, scandals. These things. These all. All these things that happen in society or happening, especially in culture, stuff that I look at. You look back on it, you think to yourself, this was something that actually affected people. It was making people argue in the comments. People maybe fell out with their friends. People unfollowed certain people about you know based on their views on where they stood and how they said a certain thing. But then you look back on it, and you're like, this is a nonsense. And this is a good example. That whole. Um, kind of kerfuffle that happened with Revere Sudus, um, formerly known as Griesmüller, where this one dude, uh, this black guy from Berlin, was basically alleging that he suffered um, some racism and homophobia because of how he was um, dealt with or addressed when he was out there raving in Revere Sudus. Um, it came, I think the argument started because he didn't have a face mask on and he argued he didn't have a face mask because he was having a breather, he was having a sip of drink and the security guards were getting very angsty. The back and forth got really tetchy to the point where he got chucked out to the point where he made a five minute i think video explaining his case or something or 10 minute five-minute video that then led to people kind of hounding river sudus um accusing them of racism accusing them of homophobia and then they promptly decided to close i think they closed obviously in part because of those allegations but also maybe in part because if i remember correctly that was a didn't oxo club close around the same time too because i think those clubs are at the time were open air because obviously with the pandemic regulations, so they had to, you know, do their parties open air. And I guess they're in residential areas or getting close to neighbours. I don't know what the issue was. But anyway, they closed off the back of that backlash. And again, a lot of people's gigs, a lot of people's, you know, employment at that time during a very, you know, touchy time was off the radar. I know a couple of people who are due to play there who are actually from the UK who gigs got cancelled so you can only imagine how that must have felt off the back of one person's complaint that allegedly a club in berlin was homophobic racist okay racism still i don't believe but let's uh, racism i can kind of entertain you with homophobic nightclub in berlin like you wouldn't survive like you'd have to be where would you have to, where would that have to be would have to be maybe in the center or something like even then like it's just it's just impossible in a city like berlin but again he said it damage was done and then you know river Sudus went and did some soul searching they put out a couple statements one of them weren't, wasn't that well received then they did i think a, some sort of um what did they do that's like a panel discussion or some sort of meeting they did something behind the scenes to kind of get to the heart of what the issue was address some of the concerns and try and do better because again it's a new club it's obviously not a new club because it's the same club as grease Mueller, but they're basically rebranding they're just starting the last thing you want look what's, what's happening to flipping about blank and they've got a long and storied reputation in the night in the scene but last thing you need is this smudge or this cloud hanging over your head you don't need people kind of taking political stances against coming to a nightclub especially it's already hard enough as it is um, imagine on the back of a pandemic getting people to kind of give you a fair shot so they try their best and now it looks like they've come out from it out the other side with a message that is pretty heartfelt i think and kind of addresses and kind of i think i think speaks to some of the issues and hopefully puts it to bed so they can kind of move on and just get to what they're doing best in it programming good nights putting on good parties having a banging sound system all that stuff I, i'm actually curious to see what it's going to be like on the inside because it opened i, I think the inside opened maybe during the beginning of the pandemic, when the, when the inside open, actually, I don't think maybe, I don't think anyone's been in the inside yet. No, I don't think anyone's been in the inside. I think everyone's been to the open air bit, but I don't think the actual inside had, has had people in it yet. I don't think so. I don't actually think so. So this might be the actual first time the actual indoors is open. So I'm actually curious to see what it's going to feel like. I'm hopefully going to be there even December or January again in Berlin. So fingers crossed. Once I go out there, I'll have time to go out there. Because again, I'm always fucking stuck in Bergheim. But again, let's move on to the message that they posted. So it says here, yeah, message to all his employees. And we aim, uh, the, the, we aim to be a club where everyone feels welcome and can party without reference to skin color, sexual orientation, gender or origin and creating a safer space for our I've seen the most recent incidences at River Sudus. Is that you say it right? Rivier Sudus or, Re or Rivier Sodus? I don't know how you say it. But tell me in the comments. Made it clearly evident that we are not meeting our own standard. This is why we hit the spot stop button on all our events, communication, um, and taking the time to listen, reflect, and learn about the organization and individuals. And again, you can't ask for more than that. I thought this was a bit much anyway. I don't think they needed to do all this sort of shit. But again, considering how tightly knit the Berlin scene is, considering how you know, um, uh, 
clicky it is as well. It was very, um, the, there was also the possibility that people could just protest and just not come and spread the word and picketed, picketing him outside of your club. And that's not a visual that anyone wants. So stopping everything and just actually trying to sit down and talk to these people who clearly don't think that you're meeting your st own standards or their standards and then get into a, a, a middle ground was maybe the right thing to go. It continues here, says, we have sat down with those um, who video, those we sat down with those whose video triggered this process, okay, including N N Nicholas Rose, that's the main guy, that's the dude that was obviously complaining, to say sorry in person for the experience that they had at RSO and to better understand their perspective. This helped us a lot in the process. We also want to apologize to each and every one of our guests who have experienced any form of wrongdoing, harassment or discrimination at our venue. Since we started Grease Mueller in 2019, sorry, 2011, our ambition has always um, been to make everyone feel welcomed. Queer events have always been a cornerstone of our program. That's why we worked very hard over the months to better fulfill our ambition that's why I really, that's why i was honestly thinking that's why that nickers rose video was a little bit disingenuous because it was like fair enough you had a bad experience with one person cool maybe two people but that doesn't maybe three maybe four but it doesn't speak for the overall establishment and the people behind it because like i said i know about grief Miller because of cocktail d'amour which is the probably the premier number one you know queer um lgbtq uh, party that existed in that space right for a very short period of time the party that was made the party that i kind of i kind of found out about through like a daniel wang essay that he wrote on electronic beats back in the day right i remember printing it out and kind of reading that shit and thinking fuck i need to get to this club and then actually getting there going to cocktail demo and having my brain absolutely blown out from my head you know just having a great time so i just find it very difficult to believe and again even when i went to greece at that time the security guards were always a bit were always a bit angsty they, they were less kind of cordial than i would go to in other venues they maybe they the the, the the bouncers i remember at um or the security guards in general at grease Miller back in the day used to be similar-ish to the security that you might see at like cc foss or Caterblau, right they were a little bit edgy a little bit you know what i mean a little bit on the hard edge side okay of course you had to you know be polite and do the whole game but it wasn't all fun fun and games with them which is fine but again, you're allowed to have a bad experience with somebody. You're allowed to not get on with another adult. But to suggest that kind of represents, you know, latent racism and homophobia of that entire club was grossly unfair, I thought. Really, really unfair. But again, you know, he needs to get his message across. He needed to come with hell and fury in order to kind of get people to pay attention. They did. And in the end, I guess it's for the better. But I just thought that was gross. That was like, that was, that was like, come on, really? Like, I know you had a bad experience and it was obviously getting chucked out of a club, you know, half naked and shit, not being able to get your coat you know, being embarrassed, you know, having to have that, you know, it's just all awful. I understand, but, you know, come on. Accusing a club like that of racism is just like, you know, of homophobia. Again, racism I can kind of get, but homophobia? Oof, oof. And racism only because of the country, not because of the club, just for the country. But again, what I know. Continues. With the help of a diverse team of experts, including music industry um, DAEI trainer Lindy D Delight, we completed a first training for our entire team on diversity awareness and conflict resolution. The trainer team consisted of people, color women, and members of the LGBT community, all of whom brought their specific perspectives on discrimination and harassment into the training. With them, we particularly looked at, um, at key problems such as unconscious bias, structural discrimination, white privilege, microaggression, and allyship. It helped us gain a broad intersectional inter perspective to develop a higher awareness of racism, sexism, and homophobia. Yo, that's a lot, but again, they did it in it. They did it. I'll keep my thoughts to myself. Together as a team, we have been also discussed and defined who we want to be not to to no who, who we want to be as nightlife venue. So they want to be inclusive, safer space for everyone who loves electronic music is ready to fall in love with it. That is where we come from and what will never change. A place for diversity in all areas, including promoters, event concepts and various musical music genres represents our scene. Interesting, that bit. A, a club with an atmosphere that is a tolerant, open-minded, fair and respectful in order to ensure our venue and more equitable in the longer term. The reason why I say interesting, because from what I remember... The Grishmere programming has always been pretty varied. They never really had, I wouldn't say it was a techno club, especially in the mornings. Like people will be playing some mad shit. I remember going in there once and someone was playing Christina, Christina Aguilera, bruv, mad loud. Britney Spears, like Duran Duran. Like it's not the place that you would go and say it's a techno club. I mean, if anything, it's kind of similar to like, imagine if like, same, it's, it's like a version of Same Heads. 
in terms of musical policy. Like they 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 try and go for like people off the beaten track a little bit. You know, the more weirder you are, the better it is. So interesting to see that they're trying to. You know, they're going to implement that. I wonder what that means. Does that just mean the, the what the promoters look like, the color of them? I guess maybe that white. I don't know. Because because it, it'd be funny if they start doing flipping Emma piano nights as a way to kind of address this. Like it's like oh yeah yeah. <laughs> We're aware that it was, um, sorry, the last one is a couple of an atmosphere that is tolerant, open-minded, fair and respectful in order to ensure our venue is more equitable in the long term. Cool, good, good points. Um, we're aware that it's something that we must work to every single night. Um, when we open our door, the training is only the start. That is why RSO crew also agreed to structural changes that will help us to live up to and commit to our values and prevent uh uh, values and prevent and better handle any form of discrimination and exclusion diverse group of employees have taken responsibility of the community continue um to process we started this includes organizing further and ongoing training collecting feedback from guest staff and working together with other venues um another step has been setting up and training awareness the team has also acted as a point of contact for guests who have experienced any form of wrongdoing <laughs> you could fill out a form if someone called you a nigger on the dance floor <laughs> no i'm joking, joking but yeah but you know it's all good stuff it's all good stuff it's the idea of discrimination blah, blah, blah. we also fundamentally reorganize the security department smiley baldwin one of the most experienced bouncers in, in berlin has taken over the responsibility of the management who's smiley baldwin they're mentioning him by name and even his surname but again they take security and bouncers and Night. oh yeah the guy from the berlin bouncer sick oh that's awesome man he was really she's a really charming guy in that documentary he comes across really well him and the other one this one the one who's bouncing at that club that is now defunct oh man that's fucking sick okay that's awesome all right big up smiley yeah he came across really really well man um in that documentary berlin bouncer which i recommend you check out i think i made a review of it already in my podcast but definitely definitely check it out amazing documentary it really kind of gives you an, if you're somebody that gets a little bit annoyed and angry and pissed off that these clubs have door pickers and you know you go to the burger and you got money to go in and they won't let you in you know or you it's like a lottery for you to get in if you don't understand that whole concept definitely check out berlin bouncer it'll give you an understand again you might not you might still come away from it thinking this is gay why am i gonna queue up for a club that i have to be selected to go into i understand Understand. but if you want to gain an understanding of what that's about and where that idea comes from and why it's so important and the uh, necessary role that they actually have in, at the club in terms of you know um in in some parts you say oh yeah the club is only as good as its people but again these guys are very responsible for how those people who those people are in that space and they're very responsible again maybe for the success of the space they might be 20 percent responsible for it you know what I mean you have your djs you have the sound system the space itself but they play a really really vital role so the fact that they got this guy involved is fucking sick so big up again big again you can't you can't hate on these guys man like they've done everything they sat down with everybody they've written a free they've got a free step you know um what's, what's that word called um outline of what they want to do and shit outlining what they want who would who they want to be as line and if harry smiley board him amazing um he is working with his team and replacing our staff oh wow they're replacing the entire security staff oh okay yes wow and yes like i said i think it was a over i think it was an overreaction to an individual incident someone had on the club especially when you're arguing with another adult especially going back and forth male to male it's always going to end in that kind of conflicting way and tent in a kind of very high tension way so to brace a whole team ouch you know what i mean they're all out of a job i don't know how i feel about that but again good to see smiley there they continue here he said we'd all we'd also like to welcome daniel plash on the team who's joined the management and has taken over responsibilities regarding the club who's this isn't this somebody yeah wasn't this guy someone why does this name sound familiar daniel plash why does this sound familiar why does this guy sound familiar Berlin, okay, Berlin Club Commission says here, okay? He's part of the Berlin Club Commission. But I think it was something else he's included in too. Maybe is it this? I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. Who's Daniel Plash? And it continues, uh, he says here, Daniel is expect experience and he well connected as a former operator of Stadbad in Wedding. Oh yeah, true. Okay, cool. Maybe that's where I have known him from. Maybe an interview that way. Among other things for his work with the Berlin Club Commission. So they've done a whole revamp top to bottom, bruv. At the end of the day, we're doing this all for our guests, our, ourselves and the experience of River Sudus. We're committed to representing and reflecting what the music industry and the club culture in Berlin and around the world stands for. Peace, love and unity and respect. With all these changes in place and everything we learned in the last months end with a new interior whoa i can't wait to see a new interior we are going to reopen river Solis in november 20th 2020 each one of us will work hard to live up to the values we share find out what's changed and give us a chance to make it better 
fucking amazing man i can't i can't wait i can't wait that's actually awesome man big up them and then the opening party is then obviously got it here um they've got it's, it looks like a strong group of locals because so, any people I, I, I recognize are some surgeon tom trago sunny or sharp um jesse J, of course dj sotafet dana rush or dasha rush sorry atta the flipping robert johnson don so everyone else I don't really rec recognize. So I guess they must be local people that they're kind of promoting. Which again is something that I've always given the Berlin guys credit for, man. All those clubs that I went to, like there, was, there wasn't really a lot of people that flew in from overseas. Most of it was all homegrown talent, which is always great to see because people on the, on the dance floor too, most of them are their friends and family come out to support. So that's always great to see. But again, big up River Sudust. I can't wait to go there. I think it's now called RSO Club. So you don't have to pronounce the word that I'm obviously not pronouncing very well. I can't wait to see what it actually ends up looking like on the inside. I'm assuming it's going to be taped up phones and shit so you won't see what it looks like inside until you go there and see it with your own eyes with your own eyes but regardless great to see good to see they address all the issues they're doing it big doing it big style cannot wait to go back there very soon